folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, and yes, I still have Arduin on my mind. So much so that I uh, went and dug out my uh, my trilogy of Arduin books, which make up, I guess, the, uh, the Arduin trilogy. That's the, this is from actually the PDF version. Because, um, yeah, digest size from that time is, dare I say, fucking hard to read. So I needed to actually be able to read. Again, it, it's in my head, and I'm looking through this, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's just so much usable in today's gaming uh, from stuff that was written, what, 40 years ago? Plus, right? So, let's look. Uh, this little article I, I picked out of Dave's was, uh, I, I found it interesting because, man, he would have been a real pain in the ass to game with. But he makes a lot of good points. And I, I will say, Depending on how you form your group, this might be stuff that you need to think about. DMs versus angry players. Or what do you do when the players refuse to follow the rules? There comes a time when every DM must handle players that are disrupting the game and ruining the play for all concerned. They may feel they have a grievance that is legitimate, or they may just be Egocentric megalomaniacs exercising their own brand of stupidity. And I have played with players like that. I haven't had to deal with players like that since my college days. Before I even get even further into this, I think if you are playing with a group of friends, this is going to be less of an issue. Because that group will be an organic group. But if you're doing, uh, all right, we're going to organize a, 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 a regular game session uh, stuff, a uh, regular campaign at the local game store where you don't know the people already going into it, you don't know the type of people you're going to be grabbing for your campaign. Whatever the reason, the DM must be prepared to evict the offending player from the game. Either temporarily or permanently. If you're evicting somebody from the game, I don't think you're ever doing that temporarily. Once the players who play in your world realize you mean business, they'll be much more ready to act in a proper manner and refrain from disruptive and childish temper tantrums. Now, all right, I shouldn't say I've never. Had, I did have someone, and again, it. it Playing in a public space, playing in a game store, and we had a, a, ready, a steady group. It was a much larger. It was a larger group that kind of got whittled down when we moved locations, and then uh, our DM took a break, and I stepped up. And uh, dare I say, we had a, a rando who came along and was like, "Oh, this looks cool. Uh, what are you guys playing?" I was like, "Oh, we're playing Swords and Wizardry." Oh, that's like D and D, right? Because I play five E. My kid goes, "Oh, I'd love to play." And you're playing in a public space. You're playing in a store. You're using their space. You need to accommodate others. You know, if they're gonna if they're going to be good players, right? So I, I say oh, this is this is a these did, quick thing. These are rules. Okay, the sort of with the light rules. Uh, Told him what the role, and he goes, "Oh, I already have a character." I go, "You can't have a character ready." We're playing Swords and Wizardry. No, no, no. I have a five E character. His half, I don't know, halfling that had wings and flew. I, I was like, "That doesn't happen here." But why? Because there are no flying halflings here. You got to use the rules that we're playing with. And this went on for the rest of. The session until the uh, player got picked up by their parents, and no, they were in their twenties. Um, and then we uh, canceled the next session just to make sure. So, 
kind of let, let, let the young man down lightly. But the whole game was explaining, my whole time was explaining to this person, no, you don't have a plus four sword of kickassery. But why? Because you got to earn it. I digress. So, yeah, Dave has a point, but it doesn't really apply, I think, to games being run amongst people that you have organically formed friendships. With harsh language, you say, not really, because in my several years of play, I have seen actions that have really appalled me by supposed adult and intelligent people. I just recounted some of that myself. It seems this type of game makes people truly identify with their characters. That's something that we should note, which is as it should be. Uh, the individual in question identified as this one character they have played, and they guess they wanted to play it in every RPG they ever played. But it also seems to make some people think that their character being killed is a personal attack on themselves. <clears throat> now, we talk about this, that you can't kill characters in 5e, right? Or they, they're really hard to hit and kill and keep down. But when we come to old school gaming, swords like Swords, you know, like swords and Wizardry, Labyrinth Lord, um, Osric, um, Essentials, right? You can create a character in 10, 15 minutes. It's not the end of the world when your character dies. But in 5e, it's a lot more complicated. So uh, even back then, people were fixated on a character. A DM must clearly state his house rules of personal conduct, as well as having his own variation of the rules of the game as he plays it, all written up nice and neat for all the players to read and understand. And oh my God, yes, if you have more than two or three house rules, you, you, you got to prepare it. Trust me now, uh, listen, when Dave was, right, was writing this, there were no computers who were for nobody had access to it right there were no word processors i went to college i had word processors at work and i had to do my my papers at work because i worked in electronics for a good period of time but uh if you're watching this you're likely watching it on your computer maybe on your phone but you probably have access to a computer if you have more than two or three basic house rules put a sheet together give it to your players and explain it to them. Explain to them why it's not going to be uh, vanilla D and D or whatever it is. I think that's important. It really is. And Dave really strikes this down. Uh, the DM should make every player aware of his rules and of the fact that he and he alone is the god of his world, and that only his rules are what count. The DM is the final arbitrator. Okay. Uh, my, my whole shtick has been, hey, if I if you think I made a wrong call, sure, feel free to let me know. Uh, and uh, I will either go, oh, you're right. I forgot it was on page 60, right? Or you're going to go, you're wrong. I go, I, well, all right, so is there, what, what rule are you referring to? Well, I, I don't know where it is. No, then we're going to go with what my ruling was, and we will research it at the end of the game session and uh, – if I was wrong, going forward, I will likely use the rule in the book. And if there was no rule in the book, then my ruling will stand uh, going forward. But I'm not going to retcon uh, the past event. But that would be like a house rule. Recently, I could explain ahead of time how I run things. Um, the DM should also let every player know in no uncertain terms what the penalties are for giving him a hard time. Yeah, don't give the DM a hard time. If you want to bust their balls or uh, step on their feet a little bit because they're a good friend of yours and it's and it's fun, yeah. But don't give a DM a hard time at a convention. They're there uh, to have a good time and they're there to give have you have a hard time, a great time. You're all there to have a good time and you, they don't need you being being a dick. I think that's what it comes down to, right? It's like, don't be a dick, because then others don't need to be a dick to you. It's okay to air a gripe in a calm and logical manner. Exactly. But temper tantrums only earn their doer a quick and very permanent exit from play. 
Once a DM rules on a gripe or rules question, that is the end of it. Okay, and like I, that and it's true. Once you've made a ruling, and like I said, I might make a ruling at the moment and then say, "All right, well, we will review it at the end." But I, I'm not going to spend ten minutes looking up a rule. If, if you want to call me on something and you have the rule in front of you, that's great. Or if you think I interpreted something wrong, you can say, "I don't think that's how it works." I'm like, well, you know what? We're running with my view, my ruling, and that's how we're going to play it out. But going forward, we'll review it. You don't want to break down with the gameplay. You don't want to bring the game to a stop to worry about a ruling. That's my house rule. That's my way of playing. Um, like I said, once a DM rules on a gripe or rules question, that is the end of it. If anyone can handle this prime law of a DM, and that player should not play games in which said law is in effect. A DM must be as heartless as one of his monsters if order is to be maintained. <sighs> there, that, that, that's a rough one. All right? And that's something that if, 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 if you can, dare I say, manipulate somebody to be more compliant as a player, it is often more useful than having somebody become a temper tantrum at your table. Um, and I play with DMs that handle people like that very well. And, uh, you know, they allow them to play the superhero they think they should be. But then on the other side of the DM screen, they're treating that, quote, you know, n ninja, super spy, Bushiro warrior, paladin, uh, Wujin as something much less than they think they actually are. I don't have the patience for that shit, but I've seen some people do that, and God bless them. Um, a DM must be as heartless as one of the monsters, one of his monsters, if ordered to be maintained. And fun is to be had for all. For a game with clear and permanent, consistent rules is a game where everyone knows the way, so to speak. And the way always leads to fun and adventure. And, and that's something else there, too, is consistency. Okay? If you do make a ruling and you, on something that there were no rules about, right, or, or you disagreed with the rules and you made a ruling, um, stick with that ruling. Okay? If you wishy-washy it, go in that line. It's not going to be fun for everybody. You're going to get a lot of your players giving you uh, negative feedback to be polite about it. So... I, I, I'm finding gems like this, though. And this is great. There's something about alignment that I want to, uh, I'll probably touch on tomorrow, where uh, Dave's insight is extremely good, too. And, and, and that's what I'm taking out of Arduin. Again, I've, I've owned it. The print books I got on eBay, took them, flipped through them. Yeah, yeah, these are cool. And I put them away. Uh, the PDF I got and looked at. I didn't read, right? You kind of flip through it and went, oh, yeah, I got new classes. Oh, no. oh yeah, I can see where it's at. Uh, you can see the D&D &D influence on this, like, like, really, really strong. And I was like, hmm. but now I'm actually reading it. And I'm finding stuff. And I wanted to share it. So, again, huge thanks to uh, George, who I spoke with yesterday. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun bringing George onto the uh, Talk and Crib podcast in early 2022 because I think he's got a lot of stuff that's going to be fun to talk about. And I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll be, you know, having a few uh, a, a few screenshots to show him from uh, from the books and to get his opinion on it. There's some good stuff in there like that, and um, yeah, inspirational. It's, it's certainly given me uh, a lot to think about. And it's a, it's a shame we lost Dave as early as we did because he would have been a really interesting, fun person to get to sit down and talk with. You know, this, it, oh, the other thing I, I pulled out of my uh, my uh, draw of ancient artifacts was the uh, uh, first fantasy campaign with Dave Arneson. Because, again, it's something that I own that I never really sat down and 
red, kind of like, ah, oh, I flipped through it and read. This I'm going through. It's like my mission now is to go through the 500 plus pages of this document. And uh, then I will do the same uh, with, you know, the first fantasy campaign. So fun times. Folks, we are still in the midst of the world of COVID. Oh, and by the way, my hair is eh, still got a blue tint to it. Um, I will be re it probably later this week and walking the dog. Uh, fun times. And then we'll get the uh, supermarket shopping in at some point. I ordered more dye. I don't know how much we have left in the uh, can. Uh, that was you all raising well over $1,500. St. Jude's, thank you so much. But again, we are still in the midst of the world of COVID. And although I am triple vaxxed, God help me, uh, and my arm is no longer as painful as it was, I am not telling you to get vaccinated. I am not a proponent for vax mandates or mask mandates or any kind of mandate. But I have comorbidities up the wazoo, and uh, for me, it was a no-brainer. Uh, you know your medical history. You know your medical complications such as they are. Talk to your medical professional or professionals. Get opinions from those that are in the profession that you trust and know your history. And act accordingly. Use your common sense. you got to keep yourself healthy if you're going to keep your loved ones, your family, your friends, your community healthy. All right? On that note, be safe, be well. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, roll those dice, roll them well, and probably be back tomorrow with more Ardo, unless something in the news pops up. And then, then we got talking crit on on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, and I believe Douglas Cole, Dragon Heresy, and also a Dungeon Grappling, probably the first of all the OSR guys know him from, uh, will be our special guest. All right, folks, on that note, I'm going to bow out. I'll catch you manana. Laters.